In the pitch black depths of the ocean, 11,000 meters down, there is no sunlight, only crushing pressure and eternal cold. It's a world as hostile as an alien planet. For all of human history, this realm lay beyond our reach. Most believed nothing could survive down here in the abyss. They were wrong. Down on the sea floor, a ghostly white snailfish wiggles slowly through the water. Nearby, strange, gelatinous creatures drift by, some with transparent bodies and bioluminescent glow, others with spidery arms snatching at the marine snow falling from above. Life persists even here, adapted to pressures that would crush a submarine and darkness that outlasts any night. This is the Challenger Deep in the Mariana Trench the deepest known point on Earth's surface. It's a place so extreme that only three human missions visited in the past 60 years. But now, something is changing in these depths. Someone is coming back again and again to probe this darkness. Far above, on the surface of the Pacific Ocean, a Chinese research ship lowers a device into the water. The crew watches anxiously as it disappears into the blue, sinking seven miles down into the trench. On their monitors, grainy footage appears, the seafloor lit by the submersible's lights coming into view. November 2020, for the first time ever, China's flag is planted at the bottom of Challenger Deep. The Fenduja submersible, name meaning Striver, has made history. Inside its titanium sphere, three Chinese aquanauts peer out into the darkness where few eyes have ever gazed. In that moment, China becomes only the third nation to reach the ocean's deepest floor. But unlike the explorers before them, the Chinese aren't just here for one triumphant dive. This is the start of something much bigger. That expedition was broadcast live on state TV, celebrated as a national triumph. Yet it was also a signal. China was formally declaring itself a major player in the last unexplored frontier on Earth, and they were just getting started. In the months and years after, Chinese submersibles kept diving again and again. Deep diving robots were deployed by the dozen. New records were quietly broken. What had once been rare, daredevil missions by superpowers in the Cold War has become, for China, a routine operation. While the world was focused on space rockets and moon landings, China was mounting a less noticed but equally stunning campaign into the abyss. For decades, the deep ocean got only passing interest. A cool documentary here, a billionaire's one-off dive there. No nation tried to conquer the depths in a systematic way. That void became China's opportunity. They looked at the ocean floor and saw what others did not. Immense strategic value. Consider this. More than 70% of our planet is ocean, and we've mapped less of the deep oceans than we have the surface of Mars. Hidden in that darkness are mountains taller than Everest, trenches deeper than the Grand Canyon, and resources beyond imagination. Whoever can master these depths stands to gain scientific prestige, military advantages, and potentially trillions in wealth. Now, China is racing to do exactly that, boldly and methodically, while others sleep on the surface. To understand why China is so determined, we need to descend for ourselves down through the ocean's layers, into the unknown. At 500 meters, sunlight fades to twilight. Strange jellyfish pulse in the dim blue haze. By 1,000 meters, the start of the midnight zone, it's completely dark. The pressure here is 100 times what you feel at sea level. It could crush a steel sphere, yet life persists, flashing bioluminescent fish squid with spider-like arms dangling in the void, we sink deeper. At 4,000 meters lies the abyssal plain, a vast, muddy seafloor stretching for thousands of miles. It looks empty at first, until you realize that mud is a thick layer of marine snow, the organic fallout of millions of years of life from above. Occasionally, the carcass of a whale sinks to these depths and an entire community of scavengers springs to life, feasting for decades on the bounty. The abyss is cold, still, and seemingly lifeless, but it's not dead. And deeper still, below 6,000 meters, we enter the Hadal Zone, named after Hades. Here, in the trenches, 
even the mud gives way to sheer black walls dropping into darkness. Finally, nearly 11 kilometers down, we reach the Challenger Deep. The pressure is almost incomprehensible, equivalent to the weight of 20 jumbo jets pressing on a patch of your skin. In 1960, when the first explorers touched the bottom in a experimental bathyscaphe, they saw a flat fish dart away, proof that life endures even here. Modern explorers have found pale amphipods swimming about and bizarre single-celled organisms the size of grapes living in the sediment. It's an extreme alien world, utterly cut off from the sun. And it's here, of all places, that the next great contest of superpowers is unfolding. In recent years, China has sent more missions into the deep ocean than any other country. But these aren't just plant the flag and leave stunts. They're part of a larger strategy, a campaign to occupy the depths for the long haul. The Fenduzi manned submersible was one pillar of this strategy, proving China can put humans on the deepest seabed. At the same time, China was developing something arguably even more important, robotic explorers by the fleet. In 2020, not long before the Fenduzi's record dive, a tiny Chinese robotic submersible about the size of a suitcase descended into the Mariana Trench. Tethered only by an acoustic link, no cable, it crawled along the seafloor at over 10,000 meters deep, then resurfaced with samples. It was a quiet success that barely made headlines, but it marked a turning point. If a robot that small could operate at those depths and survive, it meant you didn't need giant crude submarines to explore the deep. You could send swarms of unmanned machines instead. And that's exactly what China began doing. They have built a new generation of autonomous undersea vehicles, or AUVs, designed for the deep ocean. Some look like sleek torpedoes and glide silently through the water, periodically dipping down thousands of meters collecting data. Others crawl on the seabed like mechanical crabs, able to drill or grab samples with robotic claws. Others can hover and maneuver freely, inspecting cables or sunken objects. These robots operate as a team, communicating via sound pulses, coordinating their sweeps of the seafloor. One robot alone can map a small area, but a fleet of them can map an entire trench in weeks, and they can do it cheaply and repeatedly with no risk to human life. From the surface, you'd never know it's happening. A few research ships slowly crisscrossing the ocean, occasionally dropping what look like orange sonobuoys into the water, but below, a whole automated colony of explorers is working 24-7. China's even experimented with long-endurance gliders, unmanned drones that can wander the deep sea for months, periodically surfacing to transmit data back via satellite. It is the ultimate persistence in exploration. Where the US or other nations send maybe one expedition every few years to a deep site, China can now have continuous eyes and ears down there. But what are they looking for? What's the prize at the bottom of the ocean that justifies this level of effort? Let's start with the obvious, mineral wealth. As we glided over the abyssal plain, you may have noticed those weird round rocks half buried in the sediment. Each of those is a polymetallic nodule, essentially a softball-sized clump of cobalt, nickel, manganese, and copper. In other words, a battery in a rock. These nodules are everywhere, tens of billions of tons of them, just sitting on the mud. The catch? They lie 4,000 to 6,000 meters deep, far beyond the reach of divers or conventional drilling. For years, they were a curiosity, rocks that could be worth billions if only we could get them. Now technology is catching up. China, along with a few other countries and companies, has been developing deep-sea mining machines that could vacuum up these nodules from the sea floor. Picture a giant undersea combine harvester, a big robotic crawler that drives across the abyssal plain, sucking up nodules and pumping them to a surface ship through a long hose. From China's perspective, securing these resources would be a strategic coup. China already refines a large share of the world's rare metals, control of seabed minerals would extend that dominance. That's why they've staked out exploration zones in the Clarion-Clipperton Fracture Zone in the Central Pacific, a region known for nodule abundance. In essence, 
China is quietly claiming the mineral riches of the deep before others can act. But resources aren't just metallic. Remember those cold seeps we encountered? Areas where methane gas seeps out of the seabed, often forming icy methane hydrates? Those are another prize. Methane hydrates, or fire ice, could be an enormous source of natural gas. Chinese scientists estimate there's more energy trapped in hydrates there than in all the oil in the Persian Gulf. If they crack the code to safely extract flammable ice, it could revolutionize energy markets. Of course, mining or drilling in the deep isn't easy. Try to rip nodules from the mud and you'll kick up gigantic plumes of sediment, potentially smothering deep sea ecosystems for miles. The deep ocean is an interconnected system we barely understand. Heavy exploitation could have irreversible consequences. Many marine biologists are raising red flags, urging a moratorium on deep sea mining until we know more. But China's view is that with careful study and gradual testing, these challenges can be overcome, and whoever moves first will gain a huge advantage. In March 2025, China officially announced it is going to build a permanently manned habitat at the bottom of the South China Sea. Think of it as an underwater base where scientists, or perhaps engineers and Navy officers, can live for a month at a time, running experiments, maintaining equipment, and monitoring the ocean in real time. This isn't sci-fi. The construction is slated to finish by 2030. The habitat will target a spot rich in methane hydrates so they can experiment with extraction techniques. Living on the seafloor for weeks will also give China an unparalleled window into deep sea biology and geology at that site. And from a strategic standpoint, it establishes a permanent Chinese presence in the depths. As of now, China is positioning itself to dictate what comes next in the deep ocean, to be the first to exploit, the first to set foot, or robot, on new features, and the first to propose how these places should be managed. Other nations are beginning to respond. New coalitions are calling for pauses on mining until regulations catch up. The U.S. is talking about reinvigorating its ocean exploration programs, and alliances are quietly sharing more data on undersea activities. But catching up will not be easy. It requires urgency, investment, and vision, the very qualities that propelled China to take the lead. So picture the ocean in a few decades. Will we see Chinese undersea bases at various strategic spots, with mining crawlers working around them and robot subs patrolling the depths? Will the Mariana Trench become home to the world's deepest mining operation, flagged by a Chinese company logo?